Greetings, and welcome to Christ Our Redeemer AME Church. We are the virtual church serving Christ and the community. We worship each Sunday under the anointed leadership of Minister Gilbert Ruffin, Jr. and Minister James Turner, Jr. We are so glad you decided to join us today. So sit back, relax, get ready, get ready, get ready to hear a word from the Lord. Well, praise the Lord, saints. It's good to see you this Sunday afternoon uh, or any time that you might be watching this particular service. We have a wonderful service uh, uh, prepared for you today, and we can't wait to see what the Lord is going to do through Minister Turner. I'm just believing that it's going to be a blessing and that we're going to receive something from the Lord today that we've never received before. We thank God for the opportunity to be servants, especially in this Advent season and, and any time in our lives, but we are particularly happy that we are and glad that we are able to serve God in such a, a meaningful way as, as leaders, co-leads here at Christ Our Redeemer AME Church. We thank you for taking time out of your busy schedule to join us this Sunday, and we thank God for you. Uh, we don't ever want to take for granted your time and your uh, dedication towards watching this service. So we thank God for you today and we just bless the Lord for you joining us today. T reach out to your friends and uh, start a watch party or share this uh, service with them. I'm just believing again that God is going to do something brand new. So be sure to share this message with your friends. If you have breath in your body today, give God praise. Thank God for another day and thank God for blessing us one more time and thank God for just continuing to keep us in the midst of the storm. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for yet another day. We thank you, God, that you didn't think it robbery, God, to, to allow us to live one more time, God. We could have been dead, sleeping in our graves, but you blessed us anyhow, God, because you're just that kind of God. God, you look beyond our faults and see our needs, God. You look beyond our mistakes, God, our stumbles and our falls, God, and bless us anyway, God. You allow us to get up, dust ourselves off, and be renewed in your spirit, God. We we thank you for that, God. We thank you for this relationship that we share with you. None, God, can, can, can come between us, God. You have promised to be with us always, and we believe it, God, even until our last breath, God, until we see you face to face. Now, God, in the name of Jesus the Christ, continue to bless us, God. Continue to bless this church, this branch of Zion called Christ our Redeemer, God. Help us to be God, serve Christ and the community like you've called us to do, God. Help us to move forward, God, in all that you've called us to do, God. And we thank you for those who are joining us, God, to do this work, God. We thank you, God, just for continuing to bless Minister Turner. God, we ask that you would dip him deep down in your anointing oil this day, God, that he might flow freely, God, with articulation of speech and clarity of thought, and say, what thus saith the Lord God, preach thus what saith the Lord God. Let him be renewed, God. Let him be transparent. Let him be moved out of the way, God, that you might just show up, God, and show out. Do it, God, that someone might be saved today. Do it, God, that someone might join your church today. Do it, God, so that someone might rededicate their faith. And God, when it's all said and done, we're going to give your name all of the praise all of the honor and all of the glory. It's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen, amen, and amen again. Well, saints, we have arrived at the point where we need to read the scripture. I am just excited. I can't wait to hear what God is going to do through Minister Turner. And so I am going to read for your hearing on Psalms 126. That is Psalms 126, and I'll be reading from the New Revised Standard Version. Hear what the Lord is saying and be blessed. Psalm 126, when the Lord restored the fortunes of Zion, we were like those who dream. Then our mouth was filled with laughter and our tongue with shouts of joy. Then it was said among the nations, the Lord has done great things for them. 
the Lord has done great things for us and we rejoiced. Restore our fortunes, O Lord, like the watercourses in the gab. May those who sow in tears reap with shouts of joy. Those who go out weeping, bearing the seed for sowing, shall come home with shouts of joy, carrying their sheaves. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. The next voice that you will hear will be none other than Minister James C. Turner, Jr. Hear ye him and truly be blessed. God bless you all. And thank you, Minister Ruffin, for reading our scripture for this day's sermon. Um, we are excited and elated that you're here with us at Christ our Redeemer. And I just want to bring to you the word that God has laid upon my heart uh, for this uh, service. Uh, my brothers and sisters, as we celebrate the third Sunday in Advent, we find ourselves wondering, where is our joy? We've wandered this through the, throughout the pandemic and now being in the holiday season where many of us would be basking in the abundant joy this season brings, the question looms larger, where is our joy? We are in a time in history that none of us has ever faced before and therefore we are dealing with emotions and thoughts we've never dealt with before. We all have, we all have known or has been all we have known i'm sorry has been taken and turned upside down the emotions and feelings we are dealing with are new unique and foreign to us we find ourselves in a quasi exile from what we knew and loved this quasi exile exists in a reality that we know to be familiar but foreign at the same time it is this familiar it is familiar because the settings are the same but it is foreign because we cannot access the same people and places we have in the past and are used to and in the same manner in which we are accustomed. Therefore, because it is quasi exile from the familiar, different emotions and feelings begin to manifest in places where they did not used to. We begin to feel emotions in different, at different levels than what we have in the past. I know for some people, the holiday season was an already a difficult season in the past due to not having special loved ones around. And with those feelings intensified exponentially, uh, coupled with not being able to enjoy certain events or to see living loved ones due to, pan to, due to the pandemic, we see a rise in some emotions like sadness, melancholy, melancholy and hopelessness, and a decline in others like happiness, cheer, and joy but just hold on because there is some joy on the way. And our subject in our uh, sermon topic today is joy inside my tears. As Minister Ruffin read for us in Psalms 126, in this entirety, we find the Israelite people creating a Psalm regarding their joy, both in the past and in the present. This Psalm was more than likely created in its short form for the people to remember as they went on a pilgrimage to Jerusalem. During the pilgrimage, the Israelite people will recite the Psalms in this collection, uh, Psalms 120 through 134, to remind themselves of both daily life and national concerns. The Psalm that was read by Minister Ruffin is one connected to national concerns. To gain a fuller understanding of the Psalm, we must both examine uh, both parts separately and then collectively. The first three verses deal with the history of the Israelite people and God bringing them out of the Babylonian exile. The community that is writing this psalm has a connection to the history with God. There is a mindfulness of the things God has done for the Israelite people. Their mindfulness is deeply rooted in seeing God restoring the joy of the Israelite people through bringing them out of the Babylonian exile. This brings to mind events that have taken place both on a macro and micro level. On a macro level, we have seen God remove and demolish the chains of chattel slavery, the bondage of Jim Crow, the oppressive voting laws that hindered our voices to be heard free and clear, restrictive laws that have forbid people to live into who they truly are, and the vice grip of keeping people out of a country that prides itself on being the land of the free. 
Not only have we seen God restore the joy in, in our lives as a community in a nation, we have also seen it happen in our own personal lives. Whether that, um, that restoration took place through reconnecting with an old friend, finding someone who, you, who loves you for your flaws and all after a devastating heartbreak, rekindling your passion for a hobby you enjoyed in years past, or even reconciling with God after being away from God for a while. Whatever the restoration looks like or was for you, we've all had that experience with God restoring some modicum of joy in our lives. The second part of this psalm is where I would like to spend some time with you today. In verses four through six, we find the community going through a dry season in their collective lives. When I speak of dry, I'm referring to a joyless season, a season where no joy has been found, a season where those things that bring us joy are no longer accessible, a season where the sector of joy in our lives is as arid as a Negev. Now, the Negev is the dry, parched south country that the Israelites lived in that saw less than eight inches of rain annually. There is a deep longing and wanting for God to restore us like God has done in the past. Through our longing for our joy to be restore, restored, we begin to weep and cry, not only for our joy to be restored, but for things we, those things we have lost that brought us joy. Some people may find joy in material things, but I'm talking about those things that aren't manufactured in a factory and can't be bought off a shelf at Target or online through Etsy. I'm speaking of those experiences, people, places that bring us joy that we cannot enjoy this season in its full. Uh, for me, it's being with my family on Christmas morning, eating breakfast in the country of Virginia and waiting to see who's gonna pull into my aunt's driveway, helping my mom, sister, wife, and aunt cook by being the official taste tester and food hauler. Then driving up the road to the one room schoolhouse that family generations learned in and then turned into the family slash community center to have Christmas dinner with family and kinfolk, seeing the smiles and hearing the laughter of older generations reminiscing of their youth and teenage years and watching younger generations playing and running around without a care in the world. I'm not sure what that time and those interactions are for you in this season, but think back on them when you can. As I was writing this sermon, uh, tears began to form in my eyes, in the corner of my eyes. Uh, my mind started to wonder if those times are long gone and then tears began to roll down my cheek. Then God spoke to me and said, there's joy inside those tears. At first I thought there was some sadness inside those tears uh, because they sprung up from a place that at first glance was a sad place. But as God showed me, that place where the tears came from was a joyful place. It was a place of remembrance of the things in the past and as they could be in the future. Uh, to weep and to cry for God to restore joy means that there are two things at play, faith and fervency. Faith shows us that we have a belief in God that once was, can be again. The fervency shows that those who weep and cry are passionate about God restoring the joy in their lives. People typically don't weep and cry over things that have little to no meaning in their lives. Weeping and crying is the outward display of a deep loss or longing. Therefore, our weeping and crying uh, to become, they become the seeds that we sow for our restored joy as we, as we recall those things and instances where God has restored our joy in the past. This is why the first three verses are important in this psalm. Uh, the first three verses of the psalm give us the hope that God will restore our joy because if God has done it in the past, then God has the power to do it for us in the present and in the future. We must collectively and personally look to those instances and moments in our collective and individual lives and histories to see that joy can be restored. While we use our history to keep faith in God and that our joy will come once again, we must also concurrently sow our tears in a God that is able to produce a joy that is abundant. Just as a Negev look to, looks to be arid 
and we as humans feel like all joy is lost, there comes a certain shift. There will come time when there's enough rain will fall and our joy will be ready for harvest. There will come a time when the tears we sow won't be enough to bring about the amount of joy we need. There will come a time when the harvest is slow. There will come a time when we, we need a never ending amount of joy to combat the sorrow that we're feeling. There's gonna be one who is coming that will never be a ceasing fount of joy that would bring a, a fresh shift that the world can drink from. There's gonna be one who will never be a never ending harvest of joy that would never be out of season. There is one who will be the joy to the world because he has come. He will be called Emmanuel, God is with us. But that time has not come yet in this season, but it's on its way. Just hold out, hold on, and hold on to each other because joy is on its way. Glory be to God in the highest and let all the earth rejoice. Amen. What a blessed word that we received today. Wonderful word about the joy of the Lord. Now, I, I, I heard a couple of things as Minister uh, Turner was preaching this sermon. And, and so I want to ensure that you heard it also. One thing is restoring your joy through remembrance of the things that have happened in the past. You, we all must realize that God has blessed us and kept us, even in the opening prayer, in the invocation uh, this afternoon, we talked about how God has kept us alive. Maybe you're not realizing that God is keeping you in such a way. Maybe you're not, as you look back over your life, you're not connecting the dots to the Lord. We pray today that you're connecting the dots to the Lord. Or maybe, as Minister Turner expressed, that you're in a dry season. And in that dry season, you're, you're, you're crying out. Well, I want you to know today is your day. Today is your time for joy. Today is your time for joy. If anyone under the sound of my voice has not received Jesus as Lord and Savior in their lives. In other words, if you have any questions as to whether you are saved and you are struggling to find your joy, today is your time. Today is your time to give your life to Christ. All you have to do is just connect with us and we will ensure that we pray to pray our salvation with you so that you can be sure of your joy, so that you can be sure of your salvation. In addition, if you have forgotten or just haven't connected those dots and you're struggling uh, with your joy, it, it, you're struggling to have that restoration of relationship with God so that you can have overwhelming floods of joy then today is your day. Today is your time to rededicate your faith. Or maybe you don't have a church home. Maybe you feel like you're disconnected, not only from God, but disconnected from the church. You're disconnected from brothers and sisters who will pray for you, brothers and sisters who will have joy with you, brothers and sisters who will help you in those dry seasons to find your joy. Then today is your time for joy. You've got to get your joy. Somebody today, we're opening the doors of the church right now so that you might either be saved, that you might rededicate your faith, or that you might join a church, church today, that you might find your joy. Today is your time. Today is your day. All you have to do is to connect with us through the, 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 the box in the comments section, the, 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 the link in the comments section where you can go and fill that out, fill out your information so that we can get in touch with you. This is critical to us. We want to ensure that everyone is saved. We want to ensure that everyone is rededicating their faith. We want to ensure that everyone is connected with the church. Now here at Christ Our Redeemer, we would love to have you be a part of this church. Click on that link in the comments box. Fill out the information so that we can get in touch with you. This is all about you today. So we pray that you will connect with us, that you will give your life to Christ, that you would rededicate your faith or join the church today. We're waiting on you. We literally are waiting on you to connect with us. So please reach out to us. Give your life over to Christ. You want your joy today? 
give your life to Christ. And there's a joy that you will have that this world can't give you and this world can't take away. I promise you, we promise you today that if you just connect with God, that you will find your joy. Amen, somebody. Amen and amen again. Well, praise the Lord. We are thankful that for those who uh, thought it not robbery to join God's church, uh, whether they uh, confess that uh, Jesus is Lord or they join Christ our Redeemer or they are in need of prayer. We're thankful for uh, you uh, making that shift to be uh, connected to a never ending source of joy. Um, uh, we here at Christ Redeemer, we are thankful and glad that we're connected to a community that we're able to spread joy to those who uh, were, are not able to um, secure um, winter uh, coats, hats, gloves, and things of that nature uh, through our coat drive. Uh, as you see on the uh, screen, uh, we are thankful for uh, Sister Connolly uh, with the WMS uh, president, she, um, through the WMS, donated um, some socks that we, uh, some new socks, actually, uh, that we um, are able to give to our brothers and sisters uh, through our partnership uh, with Prince George's County. We are also, also thankful for other uh, persons and people connected to Christ our Redeemer that gave uh, coats and hats and gloves for children uh, because we know uh, not only are adults affected, but children are affected as well. And so we are asking for those person, persons who are able to give um, <clears throat> new coats or coats that have been gently used and dry cleaned, as well as scarves, gloves, hats, and um, any other winter accessory uh, through our coat drive. I believe it ends on the 16th. Um, but if you're able to give before then, if uh, that would be a blessing. And if you're not, then we can find places for those coats to go to because the winter does not end just on the 16th. It is, uh, it's here to stay. And it, you know, if you're in the uh, DMV area, it's starting to get a little bit chilly out there. Uh, so make sure you keep uh, gloves on and your mask on uh, too. Uh, so uh, we're at our moment of giving. Um, we here at Christ our Redeemer, we have three ways that you can give to the church. Uh, the first is through Cash App, uh, which is on the screen. Uh, the second is through Givelify, and the third is through, uh, as we call it, snail mail uh, at our P.O. Box here in Upper Marlboro, Maryland. We're just grateful and thankful if you're able to give as much as you're able to give uh, during this holiday season because we know that it's a blessing to be a blessing. Uh, some persons aren't able to give as much as they want to, but we pray that if you can give out of your heart, which you're able to, uh, whether that's monetarily or even through your time uh, um, for us here at Christ our Redeemer, uh, we will be thankful and grateful. Amen. Well, praise the Lord. Thank you all for giving and for thinking about us here, Christ our Redeemer. And we just pray that the week that you we're about to go into or the week that you're in or the week that you're coming out of was a blessing and is a blessing. And now our benediction. May the Lord continue to keep his face upon us as we go through this week and give us joy that is abundant and never ending. Uh, bless those who have been a blessing and bless those who have a heart to be a blessing. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. See you all next week. God bless.